Our way is our way is the advice and the gathering of people. Without advice there is no benefit. Today people are accustomed that all of them they talk in the same time. Especially when there are scholars and everyone wants to show his knowledge. But in reality the best is to one speak and the other listen. Orang berkata bahawa cara kita adalah berkumpul dalam majlis seperti ini untuk mendengar nasihat. Bukannya ada seorang bercakap dan orang bertanya. Kita seorang bercakap dan yang lain dengar. Itu adalah cara kita, insyaAllah. Anyone likes to speak, can raise his hand and speak. Siapa nak cakap sekarang, sila angkat tangan dan sila bercakap. I'm not claiming I am a scholar or I am a speaker. I am. I can say that I know nothing, and I hope to be at a defeat under defeat of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and our Sheikh Sheikh Muhammad Nazim Adar. Mulana Sheikh Sheikh berkata dia tidak mengaku menjadi merupakan sebagai sesuatu yang hanya dia bergembira sekiranya dia boleh menjadi debu di bawah kaki Rasulullah SAW dan juga di bawah tu guru kita Sheikh Nazim Al Hakam. Alim knowledge never ends. Knowledge always increasing as time passes. Knowledge more and more comes. Don't think that it has stopped. Ilmu sentiasa berkembang. Jangan fikir sesuatu ilmu tu berhenti di situ saja. Sentiasa ilmu itu berkembang dan meningkat. Hanya jadi pokoknya jangan fikir ilmu itu statik. Ilmu sentiasa meningkat dan meningkat dan berkembang dan berkembang. As knowledge of science increase and knowledge of medicine increase and knowledge of astronomy increase and knowledge of astrology increase as as knowledge of physics increase chemistry increase also spiritual knowledge also is increasing but unfortunately people are blind about it ilmu dalam bidang-bidang sains seperti astronomi fizik biologi kimia dan sebagainya sentiasa berkembang malangnya ramai orang daif tentang perkembangan ilmu kerohanian juga 
Why it's increasing? Because Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went into Isra and Mi'raj, into Mi'raj, and do you think that that Mi'raj stopped? That Mi'raj never ends. He is rising up and up in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine presence. So Prophet's knowledge never ends. If we say Prophet's knowledge ends, means we are limiting Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where no one can limit his knowledge because Allah raised him, he raised his name and raised him physically. Jangan kita fikir bahawa ilmu kerohanan berhenti. Ilmu kerohanan sentiasa berkembang dan meningkat kerana Rasulullah SAW dalam perjalanan dia dalam uh, Mi'raj sentiasa dia naik dan naik dan naik. Begitu jugalah ilmu. Apabila kita kata ilmu terterhad, berarti kita telah menghadkan kebesaran Allah. Allah said in Holy Quran, wa fawqa kulli zi ilmin alim. Above every knowledge there is a knowledge, above every knower there is a knower, above every scholar there is a scholar, above every sheikh there is a sheikh, above every prophet there is a prophet which is Sayyidina Muhammad Ada ayat dalam Quran lebih kurang maksud dia, bagi setiap yang mengetahui ada orang yang mengetahui lagi. Bagi seorang alim ada orang yang lebih alim, bagi seorang ulama ada yang lebih ulama dan bagi seorang nabi ada seorang nabi yang lebih tinggi iaitu Sayyidina Rasulullah SAW. That's why Allah gave to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he did not give to others. He didn't he didn't give his because Quran is not makhluk. Quran is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ancient words, Kalamullah al Qadimi. Allah's ancient words. It's Allah's words. It's and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala words are not created. Quran is not created. Quran is a talking, continuously talking because it's Allah's words. So from it you always get secrets. And this secret has to pass through the Prophet ﷺ. Apa yang Allah beri kepada Sayyidina Rasulullah SAW, Allah tidak beri kepada Nabi-Nabi yang lain. Kerana Quran merupakan, kalau kita nak terjemah, Allah bahasa ataupun ilmu kurma Allah. Jadi hanya dan rahsia-rahsianya hanya boleh diberi kepada seseorang yang istimewa. Dan seorang itu adalah baginda Rasulullah SAW. Is the words of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala? They are His words. How we know only that He revealed it to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but really who heard it? He said, "Na Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam." What we heard is not what Prophet recited. Is what Sahaba listened to Prophet. It was what we took is the what Sahaba has taken from Prophet gave to us. Means the sound that Prophet heard is different from the Sahabas heard because Sahaba heard the sound of Prophet. What Sahaba heard, Aima did not hear because Aima heard Sahaba. And what we are hearing is our shiu all the way to Sahaba to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Means the real sound, no one heard it except Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Apa yang hanya Rasulullah Sallam saja yang mendengar apabila Allah menu kita kata suara itu daripada ayat Quran itu hanya Rasulullah Sallam saja yang mendengar dan apa yang kita dengar sebenarnya adalah daripada Tok guru kita yang mendengar daripada tok guru mereka dan mendengar daripada tabiin sampai ke sahabat kepada Rasulullah. Jadi aslinya kita tidak mendengar. Hanya Rasulullah Sallam saja yang mendengar daripada sumber iaitu Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Jadi bayangkanlah betapa jauhnya perbezaannya apa yang kita dengar dengan sebenarnya yang Rasulullah Sallam dengar itu. That's why we can say that knowledge as science increase in knowledge 
and we see many discoveries. Also, ulama al-umma, the scholars of this umma, are increasing in the meaning of the Holy Quran and the Holy Hadith of Prophet And awliyaullah are more and more advanced than ulama al-umma because they are ulama and they are sincere, trustworthy, as Allah described them in Holy Quran. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu ittaqullah wa kulu ma'asadukeen. Those awliyaullah are the trustworthy one. They, they were able to take from Holy Quran and Holy Hadith from the secret and give the Ummah. Apabila il, ilmu dunia sentiasa berkembang dengan ciptaan-ciptaan, begitu juga dengan ilmu agama. Para-para ulama mereka mendapat apa, mengembangkan pemahaman Quran dan uh, maksud Hadis. Tetapi yang lebih hebat adalah Auli Allah. Mereka lebih hebat daripada ulama-ulama zahir. Kerana Auli Allah mereka, bukan sahaja mereka. Mereka juga perlu menjadi ulama. Bererti mereka juga perlu pengetahuan-pengetahuan yang ulama ada. Tetapi lebih daripada itu kerana mereka ada mereka adalah orang yang ikhlas dan mereka adalah orang yang 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 merendah diri dalam keadaan gitu Allah membuka lagi pemahaman mereka dalam bab-bab keagamaan dan bab-bab kerohanian. As Syekh Sahib read from Surah Al-Kahf and I think Syekh Abdul Aziz explained I will add that Sayyidina Musa alaihi salam he is one of the main five prophets and he brought to Bani Israel the Ten Commandments means he brought them Sharia and he was looking for more and he asked Ya Rabbi I want more that's why he said to himself and to his helper which mainly he is saying Ya Rabbi, O oh Allah I want to go and don't want to go back I want to go forward until I reach the meetings of the two oceans Hatta abluha majma' al-bahrayni aw amdiya hukuba Ya Rabbi, I want to reach the two two kind two oceans merging together if not I'm leaving and go Sayyidina Musa alaihi salam telah membawa 10 perintah daripada Allah kepada Bani Adam eh Bani Israel tetapi beliau masih mahu lebih daripada 10 itu dan dia, dia berkata kepada Allah saya mau sampai kepada dua lautan di, di mana dua lautan itu bertemu. Sekira saya tak sampai ke tahap itu, saya akan maksudnya saya akan tinggalkan. Tinggalkan apa? Kita dengar apa cerita tu. He decided because he was completely in the state of being in the divine presence because Sayyidina Musa is called Ali Ahlihim Kusu in the Anastunara. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. If all Ali Ahlihim Kusu in the Anastunara, Ali Atikum Minha Bikabas in our Ajidu Alan Ali Huda. Alamma Atahanu Dia Musa. إني أنا ربك فخلعنا عليك إنك من وادي المقدس طوى وأنا اخترتك فاستمع لما يوحى. He said when he was moving from Yemen back to 
Egypt, he passed by a very cold area, hill, and his family was, he was married to Sayyidina Shu'aib's daughter, and he was shivering with his families, with his children. Then suddenly he saw, he saw a fire. He was happy. He was, he's seeing a light going there. He was so happy that he said to his family, stay here, I'm going to look and get you from that fire something war to warm you in order to get that warm feeling I have to go there stay here dalam perjalanan Sayyidina Musa daripada Yemen ke Mesir um, mereka beliau dan keluarga merentasi Bukit Bukau dan keadaan di situ sangat sejuk semua menggigil uh, baginda Sayyidina Musa pergi mencari dan berjalan dan melihat di tidak dalam dalam beliau dapat melihat ada api di dalam mungkin jaraknya begitu jauh lah jadi baginda bagi tahu pada keluarganya tinggal di sini saya akan pergi ke tempat itu dan mengambil api untuk membawa ke sedikit kepanasan di dalam keadaan kesejukan ini he is saying to them that wait i might can't get something to make you warm or I might find my way or I might find through this light, this fire I can find a way out of it but in reality when he approached Allah called him and he said to him that listen, I have chosen you to send you to Bani Israel listen to what will be revealed to you Baginda berkata, saya akan ke sana dan cuba mengambil api ini untuk bawa kepada kalian semua. Namun demikian, saya mungkin juga akan pergi ke sesuatu tempat dan di situ maksudnya Allah di situ apabila dia pergi itu Allah telah berkata kepada dia, tunggu di sini saya akan memberi kamu sesuatu uh, nasihat. So whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to him, revealed to him. So Sayyidina Musa was feeling excited, happy, overwhelmed. So he said, that's why he, in Surah Al-Kahf, he was saying, Ya Rabbi, I want to go all the way to reach the merging of the two rivers. If I'm not reaching there, because he felt that uh, uh, intimacy and contentment with Allah's voice because he was Kalimullah Allah was talking to him directly so he felt he can ask more for himself apabila uh, Sayyidina Musa telah mendapat sesuatu daripada Allah dalam uh, perjumpaannya dengan Allah di atas gunung itu Beliau sangat gembira, terlalu amat gembira sehingga dia enggak mau lebih daripada apa yang telah Allah beri. Jadi dalam keadaan itu dia rasa dia boleh meminta yang lebih daripada apa yang telah Allah beri kerana dia merasa begitu apa ya confident yang Allah boleh memberi dia lebih daripada apa yang dia ada tu. Berarti dia dia sudah dapat satu kasihan dia dan dia, dan dia hendak lagi. Because that feeling of of able to talk directly gave him also to say ya rabbi let me see you hmm. rabbi arini andri like let me see you but sayyidna muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam never tried to cross that way and move in this direction never asked a question never he was waiting until jibril comes Never he said, what is this or what is that? Dalam keadaan begitu gembira dan begitu yakin dan dalam kelazatan berjumpa Allah, dapat berdialog ber, 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 ataupun bersemang dengan Allah sehingga dia kata, 
Ya Allah, berilah saya lihat wajahmu. Berbeza dengan Rasulullah Sallam yang tidak pernah meminta apa-apa daripada Rasul daripada Allah. Rasulullah Sallam sentiasa menunggu apa yang akan datang melalui Jibril. Berbeza sangat dengan Sayyidina Musa yang yakin dan mau mahu kerana Sayyidina Musa begitu telah mengalami satu keadaan yang kita tak faham lah tetapi keseronokan ini so he decided to reach the merging of the two rivers and he went and they had with them a fish a whale So they they went and that way Allah ordered it to go back into the ocean. So when they went and reached Majma' al-Bahraini, they forgot about the whale because his whole intention, not any more no food, or any more dunya. His, his only intention is to reach the two rivers when they were coming together. So his helper forgot the whale and the whale went into the ocean. So when he went and the uh, helper said it's what, he said, oh, means it's Allah's signs, let us go back from where we began. Means don't go Beyond your limits, go back. Go back and go slowly. You cannot come without to me without knowledge. You want the knowledge? Go back to the origin of from where you began your trip. Jadi Sayyidina Musa pun pergi menuju ke lokasi di mana dua lautan itu bertemu. Dan di situ kelihatan ada ikan paus. Dan Allah telah mengarahkan ikan paus ini untuk kostan, no? kita kata kostan, sehingga tidak lagi Sayyidina Musa teringat tentang nama cari makanan ini. Simboliknya adalah Maulana berkata, yang pentingnya jangan kita melampaui batas kita, hat-hat kita. Kalau kita nak sesuatu tu kita mesti bermula dengan asas. Jangan nak terus nak minta sesuatu yang terlalu tinggi. Mesti tahu batas dan di mana bermula dan di mana boleh kita pergi. Maksudnya mesti tahu limitasi kita. Jadi kena pergi balik kepada asasnya. Cerita ni banyak simbolik. Nak saya nak terjemah secara literal agak susah sikit minta maaf. So go back. You cannot Come to me directly, Ya Musa. You have to wait to take the, the way of procedures that you have to reach what you, your destiny is where to reach. Even Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam was from the five main prophets, but since he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give him the merging of the two rivers, Allah then he asked him, okay, go back. So that's what he wanted, that sign of the whale to disappear in that ocean. So he went back, what he found, he found the beginning of the oceans. You cannot reach at the end of the ocean where they are merging and say, without knowing its secrets you want to jump immediately in it. These two oceans are the ocean, as I think Shia Abbasi translated that, the ocean of the two knowledge, the knowledge of uh, Zahir and the knowledge of realities. Zahir Allah Zahir The two kind of knowledge, they are merging together into, into, into a someone that can carry them. Not everyone can carry that. And that's why ulama of today cannot carry that because they have no understanding about the reality of the spiritual knowledge.
kiasan di sini sebenarnya. Apabila Saina Musa berkata dia nak ke lokasi pertemuan dua lautan itu, Allah kata pergi balik. Kamu tidak boleh sampai terus kepada penghujung. Kamu mesti tahu di mana bermulanya. Jadi kiasannya adalah dua lautan ini adalah lautan ilmu zahir dan ilmu batin. Jadi tak boleh terus mendapat itu sekiranya tidak bermula daripada asasnya. Jadi orang-orang sekarang ulama-ulama zahir sekarang ini mereka tidak faham uh, kaedah begini. Oleh dalam keadaan itu mereka kadang-kadang itulah berhadapan kita apabila mereka menapi dan mengkritik. Mereka tidak faham cantuman dua ilmu ini, zahir dan batin. So what he found there? He found fawajada abdan. They found a simple servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Very simple. He's not a prophet. Might be a prophet or not a prophet. There is deba debate between scholars. We say he is prophet. And he is one of, he say, Abdan min ibadina. A, a, a servant from our many servants. One he found. It was enough for him. Allah wants Musa to learn to have a, is Allah can make whatever he like. It's not Sayyidina Musa that he can make whatever he likes. No one can make whatever he likes. Allah can make only whatever he likes. So he sent him back to that one servant. Where are the others? Because Quran mentioned Abdan min ibadina, one of our servants. I mean, there are a lot of them. But unknown. Awliyaullah tahta kibabi la ya'lamuhum ghairi. My saints under my dome. No one knows them except me. Jadi apabila Sayyidina Musa pergi ke, balik ke tempat permulaannya, Allah telah uh, menemukan dia dengan seorang. Seorang daripada mengikut Syekh Syam, salah seorang daripada Nabi. Walaupun tafsiran berbeza. Tapi Syekh Syam kata kita percaya bahawa dia dead seorang itulah ada seorang Nabi. Dan dia, dan yang Maulana kata antara ramai Allah telah memberi Sayyidina Musa seorang saja untuk mengajar There are many of them hidden of this ibad of these servants Ramai di kalangan mereka yang begini ni tetapi mereka menyuruhkan diri mereka daripada kita That's why today is very difficult for scholar they say oh how is speaking like that to someone from these sincere servants of Allah hey Allah give you an example in the holy Quran that Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam was not able to understand from that person. These are special ones that Allah kept them from the time of Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam till the day of judgment. They take from the heart of Prophet sallallahu alayhi and give the ummah. They are the servants that is being mentioned in the Surah Al-Kahf. They servants. Allah showed one of them, Sayyidina Al-Khudr alayhi salam. There are many on the footsteps of Sayyidina Al-Khudr. They are not prophets, they are awliya Allah. They are everywhere, but you have to find them. So when they speak, for sure no one can understand what they say. Jadi apabila ulama zahir cuba menafikan kehadiran dan kewujudan mereka ini, mereka seharusnya sekiranya mereka ulama perlu mengambil ajaran daripada cerita Nabi Musa ini. Berarti Nabi Khidir seperti ini mereka di antara kita. Tetapi perlu kita mencari mereka. Jangan pandai-pandai terus menafikan tak ada dah orang-orang seperti ini. Seperti apa yang berlaku sekarang ini malangnya di kalangan-kalangan yang mereka berkata mereka berpendidikan tinggi dalam ilmu agama. 
What the Holy Quran say about that abd that Sayyidina Musa found, which is Sayyidina Khidr alayhi salam? Atainahu rahmatan, he said. They fa he found a servant that we gave him rahmah. First we gave him Rahmah, then we taught him from our heavenly knowledge. Ya, jadi jelas di sini yang Sayyidina Musa jumpa itu, seorang itu daripada ramai-ramai, tak lain tak bukan adalah Sayyidina Khidir AS. Dan di, di, melalui Sayyidina uh, Khidir AS, Allah telah meletakkan Rahmah sebelum memberi apa-apa lagi. Diberi dahulu rahmat. And this is very important. You have to open your ears, your eyes, your everything to understand it very well. He said, "Atainahu rahmatan." We we gave him rahmat from ours rahmat. And who is the rahmat? The rahmat is, "Wa ma arsalnaka illa rahmatan lil alamin." Verily, we have sent you mercy for humanity. So Sayyidina al-Khadr alayhi salam in this verse means, in the interpretation of this verse, that he was getting rahmah, means Sayyidina Muhammad was giving to Sayyidina al-Khadr this instruction about this kind of knowledge. Because when he got that mercy, which is Prophet, he was being taught from heavenly knowledge. If he was not able this is the intermediary of Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad. That's why intercession with Prophet and taking Prophet as intermediary is how you can reach the Divine Presence. Ini sangat penting Maulana berkata bagi kita memahami dan membuka hati dan minda kita. Apabila Sayyidina Khidir mendapat rahmah itu, dari mana punca rahmah itu? Tak lain dan tak bukan daripada punca rahmah sendiri. Yaitu Sayyidina Muhammad SAW Sayyidina Khidir mendapat rahmah daripada punca rahmah Sebelum dia boleh memberi lagi ilmu-ilmu daripada alam ilahiyah So you Muslims Means this verse is indicating to you You want to come to my door, Allah's door Come through Muhammad SAW Or you cannot enter Sayyidina Musa has to go through Prophet ﷺ in order that he will get the knowledge. You have to go through Prophet ﷺ in order you can get having the knowledge. Jadi bagi kita sama juga. Sekiranya Nabi Musa perlu melalui jalan begitu, mendapat rahmah dan mendapat pembukaan melalui Sayyidina Khidir AS, yang itu dah berpunca daripada Sayyidina Muhammad SAW Kita begitu juga Kita perlu melalui Rasulullah SAW Tidak ada jalan lain bagi kita So, he said to him Can I learn from you? Means Sayyidina, Sayyidina Musa knew That Sayyidina Al-Khudr is taking from the heart of Prophet and he knows the seals of messengers is the highest prophet. So he wants to take that knowledge. What he said to him? Because Ya Musa, what Allah gave to, to you is different from what I am going to show you. You might not be able to take it. Because your you, what Allah gave to you and what Allah gave to Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad SAW are completely different. Jadi Sayyidina Musa akhirnya berkata, bolehkah saya mempelajari sesuatu daripada Tuhan? Berarti kepada Sayyidina Hidir. Sayyidina Hidir berkata, lebih kurangnya kamu tidak akan dapat mengikut aku. Kerana apa yang kamu terima daripada Allah adalah berbeza dengan apa yang akan aku beri pada kamu. Sayyidina Musa knew the reality because if he didn't know, he will have, he doesn't need to ask. For why I have to ask 
uh, Khudr alayhi salam. But he knew the reality is not only Khudr is getting from Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa That's why it's mentioned, Atainahu rahmatan. We gave him rahmah, we gave him Muhammad. Means we gave him the knowledge that we gave to Prophet. From the heart of Prophet he is taking. That's why he was able to reach our heavenly knowledge, our divinely presence. So Sayyidina Musa knew that. So he wants it. But the answer came, Ya Musa, you have your level, I have my level. Pokoknya Sayyidina Musa faham hakikat bahawa yang Sayyidina Khidir dapat itu adalah daripada Sayyidina Muhammad SAW. Jadi oleh kerana itulah dia bertanya, dia tahu. Persoalannya sekarang adalah adakah dia mampu menerima ajaran Sayyidina Khidir? Bukan dia tak tahu. Selepas mengetahui, bolehkah dia menerima? He said, no, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot keep with me. You cannot cope with me. It's impossible for you. He said, no, I will. Because he is insisting. He wants to reach the two knowledges. He wants to, to merge the knowledge of Zahir and knowledge of Matan. But Allah didn't give that. Only gave it to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What he gave to Sayyidina Musa is Sharia. What he gave to Sayyidina Isa is Hakika, is spirituality, is Tasawwuf, is Tazkiyat nafs And what he gave to Prophet is combining the two. So, he, he, Allah didn't give, Ya Musa, you have your level. So, but he insisted. Okay, you insisted, try, come, come along. Nabi Musa uh, bertegas nak juga benda ni cantuman dua ilmu ini Nabi Khidir kata kamu tidak boleh mengikut saya tak pasti sama ada kamu boleh mengikut kerana apa yang Rasulullah SAW apa yang Allah telah beri pada Sayyidina Musa adalah syariat dan apa Allah telah beri pada Sayyidina Isa adalah bab-bab kerohanian tasawuf apa yang Allah telah beri pada Sayyidina Rasulullah SAW adalah kedua-duanya pencantuman dua ilmu ini Sayyidina Musa nak sama ada dan sekarang mampu ke dia that doesn't mean that Sayyidina Musa Sayyidina Khadr is higher Sayyidina Musa no way Sayyidina Musa is from the five ulul azm the highest level of prophets prophets he is Sayyidina Nuh Sayyidina Ibrahim Sayyidina Musa, Sayyidina Isa, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. These are five, the highest level of prophet. So that does not mean that Khadr alaihi salam knows more or higher. No. Bukan bererti dalam cerita ini bahawa Sayyidina Khidir adalah lebih tinggi makamnya dan dari segi ilmunya daripada Sayyidina Musa. Kerana Sayyidina Musa datang daripada lima para anbiya yang yang Maulana telah sebutkan nama mereka itu So jangan kita salah faham bahawa Sayyidina Khidir lebih tinggi daripada pengetahuan Hanya di sini ada pengajaran yang perlu kita faham Kenapa cerita ini berlaku And also it means That many Israel at that time They were not ready to get the spiritual knowledge The realities of knowledge Like Sayyidina Isa's time So they were they were in a different way of uh, environment and culture. So they they wanted, Allah wanted for them to learn Sharia. So he gave Sayyidina Musa what can fit to the time he was in. So spirituality or realities were, this means uh, exoteric, you see. Exoteric was not meant for them. What meant for them to discipline them and bring them back to have commandments and to follow a procedure, they needed Sharia. So Sayyidina Musa was not necessary, they, his people were not, uh, they were not uh, ready to receive more than Sharia. So only Sharia for them. So that's why he was not able to take the Hakikah to give it to them because uh, this was meant for the Ummah al-Nabi merging Sharia and Hakikah. Pokoknya, 
Bani Israel ataupun orang-orang di, di, di zaman Sayyidina Musa Mereka tidak bersedia untuk menerima lebih daripada syariat sahaja Kerana bagi setiap uh, setiap zaman ataupun setiap dalam sejarah Allah akan memberi kita mengikut keupayaan kita Jadi pada waktu itu keupayaan Bani Israel di bawah uh, naungan Sayyidina Musa AS mereka hanya mampu dan layak menerima syariat sahaja. So he said you cannot follow me. He said I will try. Okay, try. But what happened? Three times he was unable to accept what Sayyidina Khadr did. Means he did not able to accept what Hakika says. Uh, the the maqamul al haqaiq he was not able to comprehend it because it was not the time for it it was not right for him so he came only he left it he came only with sharia that's why today you see many scholars they are away from the al haqaiq the realities that comes through tasawwuf or tasqiyatun nafs So they said, oh, it doesn't exist. No, how it doesn't exist? The whole history of Islam and scholars in Islam are carrying that reality. And the most scholars of the Muslims from time after time of Prophet till today, many majority are know that haqqaiq and these realities and they follow it. When Sayyidina Musa berkata, dia nak ikut Sayyidina Hidir. Sayyidina Hidir kata, kamu tak mampu. Dia kata saya nak juga Dan kita tahu bahawa ceritanya Akhirnya tiga kali Beliau gagal memahami Kerana apa yang diberi adalah Daripada alam ilmu Kerohanian Dan Sayyidina Musa Tidak mengerti Yalah maksudnya tidak dapat Akalnya tidak dapat menerima Bawa kepada zaman kita Begitulah keadaannya kepada ulama-ulama zahir Yang menafikan bab-bab kerohanian Yang puncanya daripada Tasawuf Bagaimana mereka boleh menafikan tasawuf apabila Islam itu sendiri tidak boleh dipisahkan dengan kerohanian dan tasawuf? And Allah showed one abd. Where are the rest? Abdan min ibadina. One of them. Where are the rest? The rest are everywhere. Look for them. If you will find one, stick with him. He will take you to the shore of safety. As Sayyidina Al-Khadr took the three, the three different incidents that happened with him, first for the, those who owns the ship, second when he killed the boy, third when he fixed the wall that there was a treasure under it. So th he took the three incidents, the, the, those, the, the, those people who were related to the, these three incidents, he took them to the shore of safety with some actions that people cannot understand. So these awliyaullah are everywhere. And that's why he said, Prophet, as a hadith on Qudsi revealed to Prophet, Man aada li waliyan, faqad adantuhu bil harb. And anyone who comes against one of my awliya, my saints, I will declare, Allah say, I will declare war on him. And be careful from the revenge and punishment of Allah against anyone who says something against his Awliya. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us, bless us, and keep us under the uh, dome of Prophet sallallahu wasallam, under the dome of Awliyaullah, under the dome of our Shaykh, wa min Allahi tawfiq wa hurmat al-fatih. Jadi, Sayyidina Khidir merupakan seorang saja. Tetapi, dia, bu dia bukan seorang. Ramai lagi seperti Sayyidina Khidir. Kaliber Sayyidina Khidir Jadi di mana mereka ni? Mereka dia di kalangan kita Menyuruh Perlu kita mencari mereka Dan apabila dapat jumpa Pegang pada mereka Ikut ajaran mereka Dan insya Allah mereka akan bawa kita kepada Show Pantai Keselamatan Kalau anda telah mengutip hadis kutsi Lebih kurang maksudnya Allah berkata Sesiapa yang memerangi wali aku Aku akan memerangi mereka Memusuh waliku, aku akan musuh kamu Moga Allah selamatkan kita daripada keadaan ini